Doctor Show. This is Professor Ayer, and with me is a very important guest, uh, Mr. Sunan Sharma, an old friend of mine, an old friend of Inertia, and he is the president, country president of Alstom India. He is right now in Bhutan with me, at Tinfu, and we are bringing to you this particular interview from Tinfu. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So, uh, what what brings you here, sir, in Bhutan right now, in this particular juncture? Well, I received an invitation from the government of the Royal Kingdom of Bhutan to attend the Better Business Summit and I accepted that invitation and here I am. Right. And I think we are both here for the Better Business Summit, isn't it? Oh, no, I am, I'm, other, I'm unfortunately <laughs> not. No, I'm doing a special issue of anyway, inertia. Anyway, I'm you here know, for the Better Business Summit. But of course, we have attended the Better Business Summit for the last two days. Yes. But yes, going ahead, you know, Alstom, I understand, has plans of putting up some kind of manufacturing setup here. In Bhutan, that's what the uh, news is. Not inertia. manufacturing. Okay. What we have, uh, what we have done, and we had uh, actually responded to an inquiry from uh, DGPC some years ago. Okay. That they wanted to set up a hydro services workshop. Okay. And uh, that means something related to the operation and maintenance and after for services exactly services. As it, exactly as it means that uh, you you know the present. Uh, Hydro facilities, hydroelectric and uh, power facilities, which are there in Bhutan, and the future ones which will come. Okay. If whenever they have an issue or a problem of repair and maintenance, the goods have to be sent very far. Okay. I mean, suppose we are the suppliers; they come all the way to Baroda or BHL is the supplier that goes to whichever mm -hmm. location of BHL, and sometimes even abroad. Mm -hmm. So the idea, which is a very noble idea from the standpoint of the Royal Kingdom, is to have services very close by. And also from the speed of turnaround of the uh, plant and equipment when it needs repair, right. like runners, like maybe generators, or whatever equipment requires repair. Right. So that is the service workshop we are building, and that is called Bhutan Hydropower Services Limited, mm -hmm. which is a joint venture of 51% owned by DGPC, and we are the minority partner with 49%. Okay. So and, uh, and its location is in uh, in Gelefu in southern Bhutan, okay. at a place called Jigmili. Right. So, what is the value of the investment here? How much is the investment done? What is the total value of the investment together? Well, I, I mean, you, you know how it is with the, uh, uh, when it is a very privately held company. We don't normally release any investment numbers, mm -hmm. but in, in the sense of when you think about uh, large scale, it is not. But it is, it is more, you would put it more in, the, in a medium you want scale. You to a secret. It, it has to be necessarily, because that's our agreement with DGPC. Okay, no problem. So I, but, but I think, you know, in India, most of the things are open. So yes. I would believe that when Bhutan also expands and everything happens, the world market, everything has no, to if come it is a, if, it is a, if, if it is a listed company, if it is a public company, then it's a different matter. But this is a private, uh, uh, two, two partners have set up a joint venture and uh, we don't re normally release Yeah, them. but DGBC is a public entity yes. as far as I am so, concerned, so from that side by it, definition, you know. It, it, they are the majority partner, so... Yeah, they must give the data it, it because is their we have to, it is their we have to take it, it, up, it is their from that because they have to come with the public data. Mm -hmm. They can't keep it a secret, but anyway, that we will come up with data. But I want to know how soon this there's facility is. There's, there's a huge difference, Professor Ayer, between yes. secrecy Welcome, and confidentiality. Yeah, yeah. Sir. How are you? How are you? How are you? How's everything going? Good, good, good. 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 He's interviewing me. Just the camera. Oh, sorry. It's not good. No, no. just one minute. See you. Anyways, technology can be. See you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I want to know now how soon this will be ready. Uh, by what the, is the, by the end of this calendar. Yeah. Okay, so that means it's quick and it's under construction. Yeah, yeah, it's under yeah. construction. Right. Okay. So uh, the second question is: It was not only you. I do understand that even Andrews you know, has the, put up some kind of service facility, or they were planning something here. I have no idea. You have no idea about that. Okay. VHL is also coming up. With, I understand. I okay, fine. So uh, that means basically you are through this facility trying to help in the operation and maintenance and services part of it. Uh, help is, wrong, is the wrong word. It's purely an initiative of the government of Bhutan mm -hmm. to set up a services workshop. If we hadn't done it, they would have done it or somebody else would have done it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But is it always possible that uh, repair of uh, any brand or any turbine can be done by any manufacturer uh, with any, any background? Like for example, a BHL, I would say Rana. Or, uh, we have already done that in the past. Okay, so that is a, that is the next thing already it's, there. It's already there. It's okay, that, that the a mechanical mechanical parts are uh, straightforward. It's possible to do it. Straightforward. Okay, the, okay, fine. Even electrical. Part, Even right? electrical. Uh, straightforward. Okay, the Even, uh, the, in the service industry, entirely possible. Right, right, right. So the other thing is, I want to know, you know, how do you see the future for Alstom as far as, of course, in India, it's a well-established uh, company. 
you know, over a long period of time. Your factory in Baroda is quite an old factory. One of the, I think one of the better factories in the country also. Thank you. Yeah. So, I, I want to know, you know, what are your plans? You know, with this, you know, we have been now, I want to push the question. We have been talking Please. about this Chinese coming into India, which has not only impacted BHL, but impacted every joint venture in the country. So, we did the, now we did a cover story on that. Are this you talking country. thermal power? Or thermal power. Thermal power. Okay, 70, 70 gigawatt of that has come in. And that is something like 4 like 20,000 crores. This forms, this was energy cover story in February. So, I want your views on that. We, we have delayed our anti-dumping situation or putting up some duties. And on the other side, huge amount of these orders have been placed, although the machines have not come. On paper, the order is there, 70 day orders. And this is an RTF information. It's not an information which is not in the domain because that's, we have got a complete list of these factors. Perfect. Perfect. Now, uh, for that, I need to take a couple of minutes. Yes. If I take our both our joint minds back to the year 2005 and 2006, Absolutely. roughly, let's start from that point. Right. Because uh, ultra mega power projects or mega power projects and the policy related to that essentially started mm. accelerating at approximately that time. Right. In terms of the private sector yes. taking a keen interest in bidding on tariff based power. That's right. Am I right? Yeah. So let's put a date there. Yeah. I can tell you with great honesty that many of the private sector players mm -hmm. in India first came to people like us. Okay. They came to us and said, we are looking for 660 megawatt turbines, supercritical boilers, we are looking for uh, this equipment. And they were working on a very, very fast timeline. Mm -hmm. The fast timeline was essential because the contracts they would sign with the government of India or the utilities to whom they were going to supply the electricity required them to have the power plants ready in a very finite period. Mm -hmm. I will remind you properly that in 2006, the global financial crisis had not yet come. Mm -hmm. okay? That arrived in the end of 2008. Mm -hmm. When we looked at two things, mm -hmm. as I'm talking, to, I know Alstom, so I can talk about Alstom. Right. When we looked at our panorama mm -hmm. of order intake around the world, our factory shop loading around the world, mm -hmm. and we looked at our prices and costs, mm -hmm. any preliminary offer which we put on the table on a cost plus delivery basis was just not acceptable. We were either too expensive or we would take too much time. I can I remember one particular instance, I won't name the customer, but the customer called even me directly to say, but Sunan, I mean, uh, we trust you. You are a great company and you are here in India and you have a service facility. Don't forget, we yes, have a huge yes. thermal service facility in India, which is servicing the entire industry. So I said, let me check and believe it or not, for a four times, 800 megawatt at that moment, request made to me, when I checked, the earliest delivery period we could have quoted was 2013, mm -hmm. seven years. How could a private sector person wait so long? Mm -hmm. So partially what I'm putting the blame square is even on people like us for not having been alert to the speed with which the movement happened. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number, so so you, you understand, after 2008, and the global crisis and the decline of the market in the USA yes. and the decline of the market in Europe, the position changed. Suddenly there were order, order cancellations, there was uh, a more capacity than we had anticipated. And if somebody had come to me in 2008 later yes. or 2009, Absolutely. my offering would have changed completely. Yeah. So that is one logical reason. I'm, I'm yeah, very but, clear. But I, but I second, want to no, interject. I'll come I'll, I'll, a little I'll, bit. I'll, no, before that. I'll, I'll, come because you have to, just I'll make a second point. point. Yeah. I'll make a second okay. point and then you interject. Then you'll understand. We also have a great problem with the whole philosophical problem of tariff-based bidding based on power tariffs. Right. The moment you have done tariff-based bidding, you have you have immediately encouraged yes. one thing to happen. L1. Lowest cost, Absolutely. fastest delivery. Absolutely. Now, if you don't place other parameters, such as emission parameters, Absolutely. such as heat uh, rate, heat rate parameters, most important heat if rates. you don't place all those parameters in position, yes. but you say, uh, that is your choice as the uh, as, as the utility owner, and now you can go shopping around the world. Then this will happen. Uh, at that moment, there was no other country except China which had that kind of offering. Right. And you saw what happened. Right. So you, you, your statistics also show that. Exactly. You saw what happened. Exactly. And finally, we we were warning finally, this. Actually. Finally, if the correction has been made, and this is still uh, a debatable uh, question mark, what happened? If it was not for the fact of governmental thinking to bring the NTPC back to right. and to insist upon manufacturing in India. Exactly. If, if it was not for that, 
even we would not have been forced into working so hard, which we did, mm -hmm. to actually discover that by manufacturing in India, we could lower our costs. Exactly. That's how we became L1 in, in, in what the part one. What, 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 that's what all I want. want to say. So now, uh, on that, you know, I want to further uh, yes. you know, talk to you. 2008, you give the timeline. But I will tell you that our discovery in this yes. entire uh, with uh, the RTI information that we have from the Ministry of Power and CA, in fact, that has come via the CA, mm -hmm. is that 80% of the orders have been placed post 2008. Then, of the okay. total 70 gigawatts. All, all, all right. That also may be, uh, I mean, since I'm not privy to that report, but what I would react to that. But I would react to that. Even in 2008, I'll tell you, our, our full awakening, yeah. if you really ask me the question, and let me say it correctly, is financially a 10 11 orders. Okay, I, uh, uh, I can push. Okay, okay let's, let's, I'm only talking about companies. Talk. I'm only talking about But that was not the case with BHL. That was not the case with BGR. That's a different matter. That was not the case with BGR. That's a different matter. That was not the case with BGR. That's a different matter. That was also not, not the case with LND at all. Yeah. Because we are aware about what we are doing now with LND. So, with LND, you know, I would say LND is a very sound party with the Mitsubishi joint venture. So, you can't say that LND was not capable of. Yeah, that is that is for the chairman of LND to tell you he must have always put it. We already talked to them. Yes. So, so according to us, their side of the story, you know. according to us, this entire you know 70 gigawatt, I would say about 60 gigawatt. Easily. Broadly, but broadly speaking, we have as industry, as industry, as confederation of Indian industry, as power sector industry, put it on record strongly with the government that yeah. if you have gone ahead and encouraged so much manufacturing to come to India, yes. it becomes the government's job to be protective of indigenous manufacturing first rather than allowing import. But See, there is a certain hazard in that. Mm -hmm. The hazard is the hazard which I think on a broader scale in that is that many people, many of the manufacturers may still initially do a combination of local manufacture plus some import. Know, that's so if you place a blanket of if you if you ha, I mean how import. it is done. No, maybe oh, maybe you can put up, like, like yeah. for example, you can say 60% yes. of the things should be done that in is the a, country. That, that is you a can bring of, a batch. That's a matter of dialogue. And, uh, then the second thing, you know, we have not agreed with Elvin, you know. I, I believe, you know. I believe there is a report which is there by CAECA. But that's too late. On, it's on after equipment, inertia report. Equipment, equipment, that was after so, inertia yeah. report. I have seen that. We have a front page cover story much before that on the no. whole thing. They came up only later. It was only parts and parcels and bits and pieces of what we did as inertia. You know, I do not know whether you had the inertia report because we made it public and no, we, wrote no, to the, we wrote to the Prime Minister also, you know, in fact. The second issue that I'm wanting to talk about in this is, why L1, you know? Why can't you have a price discount like you do? Suppose, you know, X number of turbines are made by I, I, Alstom, I'm fully uh, you know, uh, uh, LNT, and, and, then, and, then, and then call everybody. Professor, I have been fighting all my life this to, is a simple to thing. try and bring this whole methodology of uh, evaluation to yes. a different domain, absolutely, including life cycle. Yes, because if you can't enter into, you see, life cycle is terrifically important. Hundred percent. You're looking at a horizon where 25, 30 years is the minimum first life, and then a 15-year extension life. There are power plants which are running for 40 years, right? And if you're lo looking at efficiencies and uh, uh, guarantees of efficiency and so on, critically important. That's one point. Right. Second point, which is completely, and maybe you should be the one who does it is to seriously take a look. I have a very humorous question, okay. which I ask a number of my friends who are in the generation of this. Right. And my, my humorous question is a very simple one. I said, you have bought a Chinese book. Right. Have they written the ma manuals in English or in Chinese? <laughs> Good one. So, operator, right. he will never is be not going to be handheld for 20 years. Absolutely. Number two, what happens if a power plant breaks down? Right. Do you get it repaired in India or do you send it to China? A rotor, blades, something which goes wrong. Yes. These questions are not gone into depth. Absolutely. Another point which comes up is, of course, a very touchy one, which is about strategic intent. Right. That if you have placed such huge trust yeah. in uh, so much equipment in state-owned enterprises of another country. Exactly. State-owned enterprises. I agree with you. Who are not subject to the same scrutiny as you as are. private sector. And, and all of us international companies are. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Then what is what is the question mark you have left behind over there? I leave it to you to discover. I got it. I got it. Then you say overall, have they set up workshops? Have they brought technicians? What are they doing? If that many gigawatts, as you have mentioned, sixty-seven thousand. Yeah, yeah, that's the hard record. Hard record. Then record. where is the base of uh, service? 
exactly. And that is a very critical point. Yeah, and I, so I think these things, things if you your, don't bring into measurement, if you don't bring these into measurement, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Because end of the day, and I have also suggested it to banking community in meetings I've had with them. Mm -hmm. I said, please, the equity investor has maybe, if he's even if he's a majority owner, he may be 51 percent of. 30 percent exactly because he can go with the the balance in the public or he can go somewhere with that right money. what about that so he, he owns about 15 percent what about that 85 percent is public money but what about that and you the bankers and financial institution have also a service to do to scrutinize this very carefully it will become a non-performing you know? asset so these things are there it will become a non-performing asset these questions, I'm, I'm these questions they definitely need to be these examined 70 billion worth of these imports, questions definitely need this 70 billion worth of import today can become an open non-performing asset and this will be on the on the banks as, an, as, a, as an indian citizen i certainly hope not but the danger exists no it is already happening in fact whatever has been supplied the evidence with inertia is that all those machines have trouble anyway all of them have trouble all of them the boilers are not functioning in most cases you know and then you're calling a bhl you, you, you have a you have much higher privilege than i have i'm not allowed to look at my competitors don't worry <laughs> I, i'm very clear but it was a good a good good interview with you and i i hope that uh, we will see more of you and uh, on these kind of issues yes we'll see even even if i talking vocally even even if i have talking vocally even 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 if i have uh, handed over charge from one April to Ratan Basu, very able uh, successor of mine. Right. I will still be in the community and I will still be doing something with the sector. Right. And I, I think you must be as vocal on these issues, yes. you know, which yes. actually are yes. highly important right now. Yes. And I apologize that we haven't met often enough uh, no, no in problem. the past, but no, no, uh, no. you are such a wonderful person that it's always, always a pleasure to interact. No problem. We are fighting for one cause and that is the economic cause yes. of nations, not only yes. India. Yes. I would say let's work together for, Absolutely. That, for Absolutely. sustainability. Absolutely. Why Thank not? you. Thank you. Great. Sir. We'll see you again on the Enfra Show with another great, great guest like we had today and on some issues relevant to India's power sector and also the Indian economy. Bye-bye for now. Professor Iyer here on the Enfra Show.